get to know the clients. So you can start melding personalities with long-term visions. Okay. And they'll spur off these. If you get someone who's like really into yoga, and you know, like, I would love to do yoga one day, and you go, well, that's awesome, because we're looking to convince that at some point. And you start planning for people now, the job that needs to be done now, but also thinking about what you need in the future, and aligning the right person for those roles, rather than taking your current trainers and trying to box them into a manager role, because you need a manager now. Yeah. You know, right it's really that kind of structure, you know, the hierarchy in companies is kind of on flat now. Because everyone comes in with all different skills and personalities. So it's really about, yeah, it's as much about putting the person into the role as working the role around the person mm -hmm. and letting everyone stay in their lane and do the best. And when you put them in the right lane of something they're passionate about and it also helps your company vision, let them run with it. And, and they'll do it under your brand. So. Uh, it probably is at this point, if you're not getting the, the right people in, it's just against your offer. Yeah. You've got to go back and work That's on that, your vision, clear. core values, make it sound exciting. And then look at where you're advertising. So, are you putting money on Facebook ads? Facebook ads, yes, indeed. Um, I reached out to one of the local um, personal training schools. Right. Um, so, you guys are old as well. So yeah, hook up with like universities or colleges, you know, whatever university, like whatever, colleges, schools, anywhere that's like certifying or working with people, because what they, they all need, they all give the skills and certifications, but the gap there they struggle with is they struggle to give people work placements, because they're entering the big gyms, they're not taking on people anymore. So this is part of the growing thing of why, you know, the big gyms are moving to, away from hiring people, which is why you guys need to move into hiring more people. Having a solid team is going to be your winning strategy in the, in the years going forward because you give a shit enough about your clients to give them that community and, and, and coaching aspect where the big gyms are moving away from that. That's where you'll be able to distinguish why you're worth triple the money. So partner up with all these personal training certifications and all these different people and be like, hey, you know, you're certifying people, you're putting them through sports courses or whatever create a direct line to you and say, hey, can you just funnel me your best potential um, students and candidates? I would love to work with you guys and give your people somewhere to go to get a potential career. And then also set, also set up like a work experience scheme where you are always open to giving them a week of work experience because this is gonna help you with cover hours and stuff. Mm. And um, you tell them like, maybe you to intake like two people a month just for work experience, where they just give you an hour of equipment um, for a week basically <laughs> but the cool thing is you know you can be scanning for future potentials as well okay. um when you go to, the thing is again like, like with client retention if a client if you're in a boot camp spot of like 30 spaces and um, your clients know that it's, it's one in one out at that point because it's 30 spots and that's it the retention is going to go down not go up sorry because no one wants to leave because their spot's going to be gone okay. same with your team members right so when they know you've got two or three coaches but then they know there's always new people coming to work experience. They know there's always people calling up and having interviews. In a way, you kind of use it to like, kind of <laughs> put the shits into your team a little bit because they know they can be replaced and that you're actively, even if you like expanding, you should be interviewing two or three people a week regardless because then you need a pipeline mm -hmm. of trainers for when you do need someone. Yeah. yeah. Right? Same thing, if, you, if half your clients walk out, what do you do? You go to your prospect list and you make an offer. What do you do if two of your team members walk out? which is probably half your team, right? Yeah. You'd go to your prospect list of trainers and make an offer, and trainers got have a list of prospective people. You haven't got a pipeline, so there's your problem. So you guys can be building a list of opt-ins and resumes or application forms, same as you do with clients. You need to replicate that funnel and have it out there at least a couple of dollars a day, collecting two, three resumes a week, and book in for interviews, even if you don't need to hire now, don't make the same mistake as with clients. No, when we only do marketing when we need people. It's too late then, <laughs> right? Because you've lost the time of not having those clients and you need to spend more time getting the clients I and mean, more time waiting for the money to come in. So don't be reactive. If you know you're gonna grow and you're gonna need people, which you do and which you will, start building a pipeline right now, every day and do two, three interviews a week and be connecting. Your job is to be a talent scout right now. Mm -hmm. um, your job, once, once you've got your, your lead generation system dialed in, which attracts, converts, and retains clients, your new job is to start a second business on top of that, which is you now going out there attracting, converting, and retaining good talent. 
and if you do that, you'll never have a pipeline problem ever again. Mm -hmm. and Sorry, did you say to run like just kind of have a Facebook ad going for what are you saying? Yeah, just a few dollars a day. You don't make a massive spend, but yeah. if you run it for a few dollars and grab a couple of applications a week or something. Okay. And again, it's often the cool thing is again, it's about thinking about your bigger ecosystem. When you're your competitors now, uh, seeing like your ad all the time looking for new trainers, they start shitting themselves, right? <laughs> <laughs> so then might even start applying. Okay. And you're like, fuck this shit, I'm gonna apply to this guy's job instead. <laughs> so, um, yeah. so, so something we've done or I've done is so I outside of just the gym I have, I run, I have memberships at other gyms and I recruit trainers from other gyms. Yeah. And here's what it does though, like and what it does is I don't recruit really, like I watch but here's the thing though, because I know they're, I know that mentality of that trainer is they are basically training 120 sessions a month or the full time, mm -hmm. but they're making shit for money because I know what the percentages are that the company's taking. Yeah. So they're looking to say, okay, I want to make more money, but I don't want to open up my own place. So here you come, you know who they are. They stand out. They, they you, you can pick up who the great trainer is. What ends up happening is they will leave, and all of them is like, hey. Give me, like, I give them my business card, I'm like, if you're, ever, if you're looking to make more money, give me a call. And if you're a great trainer, I've seen you, I've been watching you train, I have an opportunity for you. And they'll call you because they are sick and tired of the corporate space and want to make their own money. What also does is they bring in, not just themselves, but all 10 of their clients. Yeah. So we just did this to a club. So I was running one club, I took four trainers from the club I was running and brought them over to the new club I'm at. We mm -hmm. took. 25 clients, which equal about $40,000 at revenue out of one club and brought it into a new club. So this club went from doing 60,000 a month to barely breaking 25. This new club now just hit over 200,000 for the month. We added 40 grand without doing any extra work. We just took the clients and the trainers that they brought over, or the trainer and the clients they brought over. They're looking for that place of, because they want to get behind something, right? At cor the corporate space, there's really nothing to get behind. They come in, they do, but the thing about you, your vision, what you're trying to do, the, the impact you want to have, you'll find some really great, talented trainers inside the big box yeah. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. It separates so people that just say it's on a paycheck as well. Can you quiz them on your vision? What do you think about our vision? Like, does it resonate with you? And you'll know if they're like, oh, I'm just here for the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can tell. Right. Right. Cool. Does that help? Yeah. Does that? Yeah. yeah. Go back into module four. And it's, yeah, I'll go back through that. I, I think there's a little bit of that in there. It probably just needs a little re more refining. Yeah. And but again, get networking. Everybody like, looking for trainers every day. <laughs> <Yeah. sentence. laughs> cool. All right. Uh, all right. Well.